almost ready. Stream mode. Stream mode. Mode. Okay. Just making sure everything is set up like it ought to. So, actually, you know, just to be clear to whoever's watching ahead of time, I've never really played a Resident Evil game before. I know a little bit about some of the universe and lore a little bit, but I'm I'm not entirely versed. I've seen a, I know I've seen a full playthrough of Resident Evil Seven. Um, I know that one has like some different gameplay and whatnot to it. Um, I think I recall seeing a little bit of some of the uh some gameplay of the first game like a, like a someone doing a, a let's play of that but i don't really remember too much of that so this will this should uh mostly be blind but there are going to be things i know and uh in case you couldn't tell based on a the the menu that's up here right now i'm playing uh resident evil director's cut off of the the playstation one classic or the, the mini or whatever you want to put it um so that's the the version i'm playing because it's the most convenient all right let's go version of the Capcom intro from various Mega Man X games. <laughs> Resident Evil. Got a screamy dude. Okay, press any button. Nope. Well, got nothing else. Uh, standard training advanced hey Argyle uh, standard training advanced are these difficulty levels or is training like an actual like tutorial thing Strength of hide foes isn't the only way to survive this horror. I 
I assume, difficulty. Resident Evil. E. Yes, it is Resident Evil. So, which Evil. one? Ah, the, di yeah. the original director's cut. Complete with that shitty music. Wasn't it the DualShock one that had the shitty music? No, I think it was the director's cut. You know, now that I think about it, there are so many versions of the original Resident Evil. We actually can debate and figure this out. Uh. Let's see, it was the original. There's the DualShock. The, uh, the director's cut. I know there was like a, a DS port. The GameCube one. You know, like the GameCube remake. I think they're... Are, are they working on like a... Like a new version? Not that I'm oh, aware was, of. Oh, it was a director's cut according to... Uh, uh, Magical Nate. Oh boy. It was director's... Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Okay, you know what? Let's do it by standard difficulty. Resident Evil. Okay, oh, now we choose. Yeah, I'm Chris Redfield with a shotgun, or Jill Valentine, the master of unlocking. I'm gonna be Jill. I think, yeah, I think Jill is considered, like, the easy zero of the two because you have the lockpick. 1998, July. Raccoon Forest. Which is outside of Raccoon Alpha City. Alpha Team is flying around the forest story zone, for situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we're searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle Chris, of our mission. You found it? No, I haven't found it yet. God damn. Ugh. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about 10 people. Victims were apparently eaten. Bravo team went to the uh, hideout made you of the play this oh, one? Brent, Brent, let me get through the, the... I haven't watched this before. Right. Look, Chris. Oh, Chris! Chris, It was Bravo Team's helicopter. Nobody was in it. But strangely, most of the equipment was still there. However, we soon discovered why. Chris Redfield. Jill Valentine. God, I just love the 90s cheese. Oh, God, I know. Right? Mary Burton. Rebecca Chambers. Albert 
Wesker. Okay. I'm... Resident Evil. They have escaped into the mansion where they thought it was safe. Yet. What is this? Wow. What a mansion. Oh, here it comes. The Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it. Don't open that door. But Chris is... What is it? Maybe it's Chris. Now, Jill, can you go? I'm going with you. Chris is our old partner, you know. <laughs> okay, let me handle this. <laughs> Stay alert! <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that voice acting is just legendary, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, control N. There you go, the best part of the original version. Everything after this is just inferior to the HD remake. I, I am quite willing to believe that is the case. Oh, okay. definitely. Let's be honest. The only reason to play the original Resident Evil is for the legendary really bad voice acting and that opening you know the opening live action shit now i know that george a romero did like directed the resident evil japanese commercial i don't know if he ever directed the other live action stuff i'm gonna have to look into that mm. okay just getting a little bit used to the controls it got oh yeah you, good old classic tank controls and i I know I get used to hearing people complain about them, but it's like I, I, I've never really done, I haven't gotten too much experience with it myself, so this is weird. Okay, so that's run. I've got the controls opened up here. Okay. Knife. Okay, Beretta. First aid spray. Got a map screen. And according to your biorhythm, you are just fine. Yeah. But well, that's Jill Valentine. She's more than fine. She's, she's sexy. Okay, so that's for accessing files. It went with standard. So, yeah, it went, yeah, it went with standard. And um, uh, to answer your question from earlier, Bren... Um, basically, it's like, okay, I, I wanted to do something for Halloween, and I kind of figured, well, I've been meaning to do an actual physical dive into Resident Evil myself, and I got this version on my PlayStation Mini, so I figured, well, might as well give it a try, especially since, well, you know, it's I it's mean, the game that started, the, it started it all. Well... If you want to get technical, uh, I, I know there was like uh, previous stuff that inspired it, but like, yeah, like if you want to get technical, either Alone in the Dark or the NES Sweet Sweet Home uh, yeah. RPG. Yeah, yeah, like I'm talking in terms of like this is what popularized the the thing, and it's yeah, you know obviously. the beginning of Resident Evil. Yeah, just because a couple things was first. This one is the one that popularized it. Well, that in Silent Hill. Hmm. A dusty-looking grandfather clock. You know, why do they call it a grandfather clock? Is there a grandmother clock? Mm. Like, I'm not even being joking. Like, I'm always... Like, why call it that? You could probably look up the entomology what? for it. What is this? Hmm. What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Hope this Don't is not your Chris's hand in that. 
I don't know where it's been. Barry is investigating, presumably in another person. Nothing inside. I mean, picture of a beautiful scenery. Like, you know, I'll, I'll give the game this. While, while the tank controls are kind of clumsy and awkward, given all these camera changes, I could see how it makes sense to have a... Uh... Yeah, that's where tank controls make sense. Yeah. Yeah, because remember, this was revolutionary for the time, so they had to make concessions. Hmm. Plus, this was made before the tool shock. I mean, it's funny to think now DualShock controllers are now the norm, but... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Bad things are happening. It's a lot you know what you should do? Why don't you... Maybe you should look up a PDF of, like, the original Resident Evil strategy guide. I bet there's, like, a Prima one or something. Use the open the door. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna try going blind first. It's locked. Use the lockpick to open the door. Huh. I'm guessing I have to yeah, retrieve that. Okay, get the lockpick yeah, eventually. Right. Prima actually did make a Resident Evil guide. It was for the GameCube one. Hmm. So I was technically correct. Right, this leads in here. Okay. There's also a Brady Games one. I recall Prima was usually the better to take. Let's see. Oh. Oh, what do you know? There was, in fact, a Prima official strategy guide for the director's cut. Huh. Oh. Well, how about Some that? Some calories, F and D. Uh. Nope, 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 nope. I, I don't like that. You know, Pray it, Bobby. Pray it. Pray it. Go away. Okay. He's Kenneth from the Stars Bravo team. Now he's become a mere oh. shadow of his former self. Ooh. Nope, nope, did get yeet stay down, stay no. down, you fricker. Ah. Oh shit. Yep, yeah, there is a there is a reason why I even even the HD remaster I don't play. They are bad games. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, I cannot, like, deal with the old classic style. Yeah, you know what the worst part is? What? You didn't save. Yep. Hmm. Well, I, I, as I recall, saving in this game means using typewriters, right? Yes. Yeah, you have to use ink ribbons. And this you have to have ink games. ribbons. Yeah, this is one of those games where you have to ration your save. Oh, and ink ribbons take inventory. Yeah, no, inventory. they... They are the most frustrating games. What is this? It's like... Wow. What a it's mansion. It's why Resident Evil 4 is considered the best Resident Evil made Captain because Wesker, it Chris? fixed everything. Okay. Stop it! Though, Don't open that well, door. Resident Evil but Four Chris's... is definitely the best of modern Resident Evil, whereas Resident Evil Two what is, is their best for Maybe old school Chris. Resident Evil. Yeah. Now, Jill, can you go? And even I'm then, going like with for you. Resident Evil Two, you got the remake, partner, which you know? is brilliant. Exactly. Okay. Let me handle this. But let's be honest. This this voice acting is just. Yeah. Yeah. Stay alert. 
I do wish uh, I could skip the cut the cutscenes though. <laughs> I know, as awesome as this voice acting is, you don't want to hear it over and over again. It's like a fine cheese. Yeah, it's great, but you don't want to he eat it all. A dining room. Dining room. But yeah, I think it's also just the thing. Like, I am, I am easily frustrated what? by what is funkiness. This? Yeah, I'm with you on What that. is it? It's Blood. like I'm playing through Tekken Jill. 7, See if you can find and uh, I'm at a part that I'm actually this. stuck at, where you play Hope as Akuma, and you're blood. fighting Heihachi. Oh! And Akuma plays exactly like Akuma plays in Street Fighter. Which oh. means very, very clunky and like static kind of attacks compared to the more fluid uh, fluid movements of Tekken characters. Which does make sense. Akuma is basically the equivalent of a mad bull. Yeah. But it does go to show that Tekken and Street Fighter's gameplay is a little, uh... There's differences in how it flows, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, I got my gun, and I'm not just gonna stand there like a dumbass this time, because... Okay. Though when it goes down, I believe you should use your knife to try and, like, stab it down. Oh god, the... Oh fuck, the cameras. Okay. Come on, you bastard. My friend. What? Since you, since you basically avoided watching, uh, joining us for Hollow Knight. It was that, fun. That that means uh, you you've gotten further in it, right? I've been... Okay. If I'm gonna be honest, I've been busy with planning out my, my own Pathfinder campaign, dealing with script work because the latest DLC is coming out, and I've been stuck in Skyrim. Yeah. God. So... No, I haven't, unfortunately. How? That and my depression has reared up, so I've been having a case of Lucas Block. You know how it is. Yeah. Okay. You know, if there is one thing, be grateful this ain't the GameCube version. You wanna know why? Why is that? There's a chance they would come back up as red. Gold asshole. Redheads, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Like, the GameCube version did a lot of stuff to, like, fuck with veterans. Yeah. Like, uh, there's... I'm sure you know of the infamous scene where, you know, you walk through the hallway near the window, and then all of a sudden dogs come in. Mm -hmm. Well, the GameCube version, that same spot, cracks the windows because... They know that the veterans are going to expect it. Barry? Yeah, but the dogs don't come. What is it? Watch out! It's a monster! Let me take care of this. Barry, can yeah. we borrow your gun? <laughs> what is it? I mean, you can get his gun. too. I'm not I maybe by this creature. Or not, but... Anyway, yeah. let's report I'm... this to Wesker. Yes, the obviously evil Wesker. Yeah, let's report to him. Ah, he seems hey. like a trustworthy guy. It wasn't. It wasn't too obvious at this point. I know. I know. It's just funnier in hindsight. Yeah. Though to be fair, knowing the twist early on does allow you to try and pick up on any of the subtle clues. Yeah. And, you know, not so subtle. Quote. There's subtlety in this game? Nah. 
Wesker! No. Well, Help me look maybe for the him, original Joe. Biohazard. And don't leave this hall for the time being. But not this one. Also, what do you think? Resident Evil versus Biohazard. Which is the better game? I prefer the name Resident Evil. I mean, Resident Evil is a classic, though. Biohazard does make sense for, like, the theme of, you know, zombies made from engineered viruses. Yeah. yeah. At least with Resident Evil 1, given that we're inside of a manor, it fits more. But later on, it's one of those... It's an artifact title, so to speak. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, right, so... Was it... Seven or eight, it's you know, Resident Evil Biohazard. And I think in Japan they actually did the exact same thing where it's Biohazard Resident Evil. Yeah, they did that with Resi 7. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. I mean, at this point, the whole it's Resident Evil in the US and Biohazard in Japan has pretty much become common knowledge. The so, both parties, it's not like back when the internet was barely a thing. Yeah. And then then you have like weird cases of like the the one the one game series with tank style controls that I like and it's because it usually combat is done in first person anyway with smoother controls. And that is uh Fatal Frame, or as the Americans call it, Project Zero. You know, it's called Fatal Frame here too. You're thinking what? Project Zero in Japan. Oh, is it? I thought it was... Oh, okay. I thought it was... Uh, never mind. Oh. So I got that bit wrong, but yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Did, did you know that uh, the Mario Brothers 2 in America, in Japan, was originally Doki Doki Pack? Yes. <laughs> and, but do you know why what Doki Doki Panic was originally advertising? Yeah, yeah, yeah this... No, but do you know what they were supposed to represent? Not just we 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 we, we have done we've done the meme. There's there's no need to go further. No yeah, no no. But, but yeah, it's fine. It's evil. Eh? I have to search this. It was actually for a TV show. Bren, Bren, we we get it. That the, the the we we we've all seen the things. The okay. sorry. Oh yeah, I gotta press the button to walk down the stairs. Uh... <laughs> you know, yeah. if this game doesn't work out, I could direct you to a interesting uh, uh, game for the PlayStation I, One. I'll, I'll, I'll think of something. I, I mean, this probably is going to be like a one-off. May, maybe I'll try a second, but we'll we'll just have to see. I was either going to recommend Cladoka, which is the first game of the Shadow Hearts series. Uh, it's basically a horror tactical RPG. The other would be Parasite Eve, which is basically it's Resident Evil meets Chrono Trigger. Yes, and Fo Fox, Fo Fox has, has lobbied heavily for Resident for uh, Parasite Eve. Yeah, and I, I might actually do that. I, I'd have to drag out my PS2 to here, but find anything, Jill. Nothing. Yeah. What is this all about? I can't yeah. figure it Every out at all. Beats me too. Now it's Wesker's time to disappear. I don't know what's going on. Well, it can't be helped. Let's search for him separately. I'll check the dining room again. Okay. I'll try the door on the opposite side. This mansion is gigantic. We could get into trouble if we get lost. We should start from the first floor, okay? And... Jill, here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. There it is! I he was said waiting for it! He said it and the Thanks. dream! Maybe I'll need it. <laughs> oh. Listen, if something happens, let's meet up in this hall. <laughs> This time, I'll be there. I don't know whatever happens to Barry and Resident Evil. I think he 
Ruth. And another. And now through the blue door. What is this, doom? Okay. A woman drawing water. Okay. So we're in a gallery. Picture of beautiful scenery. Huh. Oh, he was in Resident Evil Revelation too. That was his last appearance. Yeah. Huh. And what is in here? Right, yeah, I forgot you play as Barry in Revelations 2. Revelations and Revelations 2 are great games. Like, they're overlooked because yeah. you know, they're not part of the main line. The worlds are not as, like, interesting to talk about as, say, uh, Resident Evil Guided uh, History. It's just one of those, oh, they're there. They're fun? Oh, that's good. Like, no, I would say, like, okay, Revelations is half a good game, and then half of it tries to be, like, a freaking third-person action shooter, which doesn't work as well. It's kind of like, uh, it's got the middle, the middle child thing. Yeah, because it's like, you have like all the stuff on the, uh, on the ship, which plays like, you know, more classic survival horror, and then you have like all the flashbacks, where it's like, oh look, monsters are attacking and you play as like a essentially a SWAT team I think it's you know it's BSAA response team so it's more in your face action which like I I didn't mind but you know it's one of those things that a lot of people complain about yeah especially if it's like you, you play Resident Evil for a certain reason like yeah when you play Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, you kind of know what you're expecting. And those are more action-oriented games. The original three are more survival-esque. Mm. You know, action. I, I would say, um... Revelations 2 is a very interesting game. It has... It's kind of half a stealth game as well. And then there's Resident Evil 7, which, uh... It is trying really hard to be Silent Hill. I don't like... I don't like 7. 7, I... I know a lot of people are like, Oh yeah, 7's a return to form. And I'm like, it really isn't. It's... Even like in said, Resident Evil 1, you can... Like, there is... Like that, yeah. There are more enemies in Resident Evil 1 than there are in 7. Like I said, Resident Evil 7 is trying really hard to be Silent Hill. Kinda? Well, in the whole, it's trying more to be a horror game than a survival action game. Yeah. At least, look at it this way. With the direction that Resident Evil 6 was leading Resident Evil, the whole Resident Evil franchise. The fact that it, they went to seven, you know, they just went to a big. Uh, God. That means that. You forgot about those dogs, didn't you? I, I knew it was coming, because I recognized the the hallway from yeah. things. Uh, yeah. I have three bullets left. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Maybe we could play Dino Crisis 2. But, um, Resident Evil 8, from what I have heard, is Resident Evil 4 2. 
it's a good mix of horror and action without one overpowering the other. Yeah. At least with four, the way I see it, there are moments in the game where I am kind of freaked out. And that's usually when those fucking Latin monks start showing up. Yeah. You know what? I'm yeah. good. <laughs> you done? Yeah. Yeah, getting your face ripped off by a dog would do that to me. I, I, I mean, that's it, and I, I don't want to start over again and just, you know what? I've experienced what? The, the voice acting. I felt the controls. You know, may, may, maybe I'll try one of the later Resident Evil games, but this, they, they're, there's just too much, uh, there, there, there's too much to bear with. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I would definitely say, like, yeah. if you really wanted to get into Resident Evil, starting with the 2 remake is a good starting point. Yeah. Maybe look if you want to understand the plot, just look up That's... like one of those like YouTube, you know, documentary things. They're all over the place. But the funny the thing with that though is like the plot in Resident Evil One is while it's important, it actually doesn't do that much for the entire yeah, series. It doesn't matter much, but like I said, if you want, yeah, plot, yeah. Uh, no. In no, fact, I think so Resident Evil 2 is also the biggest, uh, yeah. like, a lot more of the plot stems Maybe. from 2. Yeah. 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 Hmm. You know what? Looking at... The PlayStation Mini was such a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we got Final Fantasy 7 and Wild Arms, but then you got really bad choices like uh, Revolution's Persona. Persona 2 was the better version. Like, Revelation's Persona is just... You want to laugh? Look up the baffling, like, terrible localization. It's good for a laugh. Yeah, maybe I'll do this. Honestly, it was pretty good, and jumping flash is definitely an interesting choice. Yeah, I remember giving it a little bit of a, a shot before, and I actually found it to be kind of neat. Yeah, this is one of those games like, not perfect. And it's something where I don't mind tank controls because it's from a first person. <laughs> yeah, that actually makes sense. Boys and girls and non-gendered machines. No, it's guys and gals and non-binary pals. You know, it rhymes. That boy's true. Yeah, I think if you're looking for a horror experience for Zoka or... I would also throw my hat in for Fatal Frame. Fatal <laughs> Frame, yeah, I, you know what? Fatal yeah. Frame's also a good choice. You know, it depends on how difficult you want your word. Well, I, I don't have a Fatal Frame game, so I'm gonna have to skip yeah. on that. Yeah, no, not even emulate. I mean, I probably could, but I prefer not yeah. to use it if I can help it. 
besides, there's something to say if it's like playing vinyl. Right? You can download the music, but there's something to be said about listening to music on vinyl, right? I mean, I'm fine with downloadable things. It's, it's just, you know, wanting to use an official thing if I can help it. You know what? I can respect that. I mean, I like to emulate a lot, but I do try to get official. Yeah. And I mean, technically speaking, this is emulation right here, even if it's got all the, the fancy trimmings to it. Well, it didn't do a very good emulation job. Yeah. Now, believe me, you get a GameCube mini. Unfortunately, we're still waiting on a 64 one before we get a chance of that. Games for the N64 one, like Mario Kart 64, Doom 64, what 64? You know what? Just, just put every game that has 64 in it. How many games were there that had that? Several. Yeah. Huh. an imperfect universe. Yeah. I, yeah. As primitive as this is, it's kind of charming to see what they were trying to do to, you know, be like, hey, what do we do to game in three dimensions? Yeah, PlayStation era 3D polygonal game art. Like, yeah, the interrupt, like, early polygonal gaming. And it's kind of funny, because it's one of those things you can kind of look at and think, you know what, this this kind of feels like a thing that's yeah. like, yeah, this might be something, like, you know, that would be like, oh, this is your first game. Try making a, a block you can jump onto or whatever. Yeah. At least it does a lot. It makes a lot more sense, and it looks a lot better than... Fuck, Oh, God, I know, right? Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna look this up. Let's see. I think Bubsy was the first plat free platform. Yeah, I wanna know which game first. I feel like there must have been some kind of prototypical 3D platform that came beforehand, but yeah, that was... What, what's the game called again? What game? This one is Jumping Flash. Jumping Flash. Okay. Well, Jumping Flash came out in Japan April 28, 1995. Bugsy 3D came out in North America because it was only released in North America and Europe November 25th, 1996. Hey! Wow, so they really did have no excuse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than, yeah, it was still, like, a newborn genre, but, yeah, like, yeah, Jesus. Like... Man, I can't believe that, that Bubsy wound up being so poorly when it won the Gold X Award. Oh. oh, and the best part, Jumping Flash came first in North America November 1st, 1995. A whole year before Bubsy came out. So it wasn't like, oh, it came out in Japan first and then in the US second. No, no, it came out first everywhere. So and it holds the Guinness World Record as the first platform video game in true 3D. And 
And you know what? For being the first of its kind, yeah, it's not perfect, but god damn. Yeah, like, th this is downright playable. I think yeah. it probably helps that... Why... Why... Why is floating pan with egg... Yeah, egg I was just about to ask. Wait a minute, hold on. Those seems to be like volcanoes. Oh, it's using volcanic heat to cook it! It's egg! Yeah, that actually that makes sense. sense. But yeah, like, I think for this game, part of what helps is that, um... I mean, yeah, you know, tank controls and all that, but again, like, the first person view, I think, actually helps. And there's also the whole, um, when you... Where you're landing. Yeah, and that the camera automatically looks down, because, like, honestly, that's, like, the biggest issue, usually, when it comes to, um... Platforming in first person is you really can't see where your feet are. Yeah, or games that don't let you see when you look down at least get compensated by, like, oh, if you hit the edge, you can pull yourself up. Yeah. Like... You, you gotta either give us the ability to pull ourselves up if we just make it, or let us look down and see where we're landed. You, you gotta give us one, right? Yeah. But yeah, this isn't my kind of game. But God damn, it's nice to look at a look back at history, right? Yeah. I don't even know what the point of this game is. It's just go through the level, have fun. Uh, it's time, but you're supposed to get to these, uh, the, call them jet pods? That are, like, ca carrots? Energy? Carrots, I guess? Because yeah. we're a well, bunny mech? Makes sense. Even though you really shouldn't give carrots to a rabbit. Man, when I found out that you don't eat pretty good carrots to rabbits, why did our child die? Because I grew up with Bugs Bunny, like, right? Eh. I mean, I, I had I had rabbits as a kid, so it was oh. one of those, like, yeah, no, it's obvious. Well, when you're, well, I grew up with, like, Bugs Bunny. I didn't know rabbit. Okay, you could feed them it, but there's too much sugar in them. It's not good for them. Apparently Mel Blanc hated carrots. So every time he did the, eh, what's up, Doc? They would stop the recording and he would just spit into a, you know, nearby trash. He did. Wait, so he would actually eat carrots as part of the bit? Yeah, because that was the only thing that would sound right when recording back then. Huh. Mel Blanc was... He was a dedicated actor. When one of his more famous moments is when uh, Daffy, you know, went to Alibaba's game and there was like that big guy, Hassan, who would go like, Hassan! Smash! You're like, no, hold Hassan! Oh! There's a scene where Daffy's just like running from a distance towards us and Hassan is like, Hassan! Yeah, but and he's like in the distance and he's getting closer. Apparently, no blog recorded that yell at the parking lot. Mm. Man is dedicated to his was dedicated to his crap. Ugh, rest in peace, man of a thousand voices. Speaking of rest in peace. Apparently, the actor who played Hagrid in Harry Potter didn't die. Yeah, that was like yesterday, the day before. Like that a bitch and a half. He was one of the better actors in that in those movies. Well, at least I feel a little better knowing how the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh died. Not a hero. Yeah. Alright. Although now I'm just thinking of that Adam West 
moment in Family Guy where the Bible says an eye for an eye. So we will take our revenge on the ocean. He just takes a knife and starts stabbing at the ocean. There. Now you'll harm no one. <laughs> Ooh, it's a bus. I mean, else this game kind of goes for a cutesy symbol art style. I know. Look at How much money do you think it costs to produce that FMV? I don't know. I don't know how much it would have cost back then. I mean, nowadays, it's like, with how cheap cameras and, and you know, editing programs are. And it, getting one to look like an old school PlayStation FMV, that might be tricky. And just because, like, it's interesting to think how, like, that was once, like, a big selling point for games was having, you know, those movie sections. But it's also kind of I thinking mean, how no. it's, like, even back then, very simple computer a animations would have taken a while to, you know, build up and render and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of comics, it's a staple that a lot of like ancient evil comes from Egypt. Yeah, it's you know, a trope. If there's something, if there is a trope, if there's an ancient civilization with a video game, it's either they're evil or something big girl wipe them out. Yeah. Yeah, you never find an ancient civilization that's just like you just die because. You know, normal 
you know, civilizations come and go. No, there has to be a reason. I mean, I guess that kind of goes in line with the whole thing of, like, if, if the ancient civilization was so great, why aren't they still around? And Yeah. And Moai heads, because why not? I, oh, well, and a Stonehenge. We also got a Stonehenge. Well, remember, it is Japan. I mean, Japan, I, Japan is like fascinating by other cultures, same way. And I mean, look. Oh, oh, oh. But let's be honest, there's probably plenty of some uneducated people who would just lump together a whole bunch of ancient civilizations. Yeah, that's where I'm getting at. It's how, like, we are, like, the pain of files, but they only like the aesthetic, but don't understand everything. Mm -hmm. I'm saying with the Japanese people from other cultures. Oh, oh that's amazing. Kind of charming, right? mm -hmm. I oh I, I I don't what what is happening? Uh oh, oh, it's the Cisco. Cisco I shouldn't have taken those candies. Okay. Wait, you took pills. <laughs> and that triggered a psychedelic trip. Oh my god, the game is LSD. Nah. Here is an actual game called LSD. I know. Which? Oh, I oh, see. Oh my God. Speaking of missed opportunities for PS1 Mini. Yeah, now there's a game that would have sold, you know, the Mini a few times, right? Yeah, like I, I know that was like a Japan only thing, or, or, or maybe it's also released in Europe. I mean, the point is. Like, if they included a few games that weren't on, uh, that didn't have an American release, that that would have been a cool thing, I think. Yeah, it's one of those things where... Okay, Nintendo, I know you're making emulation. But if you work together with the people who made the Mother 3, you know, localization, just upload that ROM, we will buy it. I just realized these, these are dumb beetles. Also known as scarab. Yeah. yeah, like I, that's one of those things where, like, I I am of the camp that believes part of the whole reason we even still have that ROM on the net unofficially is because there is there is someone. Possibly in NOA, maybe somewhere else, but like someone is being like, okay, we're just not gonna do anything about it, we're just gonna pretend it doesn't exist and let it happen. Oh my god, it really is a power pill. Use of a doo-doo. 
want to guess what year that came out? <laughs> Sometime in the 90s? It came to a new deal fanfic that was in the bottle probably October 14, 2005. Yeah, that seems about right. So, in other words, they let that genie out of the bottle. <laughs> yes, they did! Yes, I did! Hmm, more desert. Ready to go? Hit me. Yeah. Reveal your secrets to me. Ooh. Yeah. Something like that. Put a smile on my face. While Bethesda is stupid a lot of the time, they do seem to put a lot of, uh, you know, references to fans who are really good ones. We'll really just have to see, like... Yeah! Part of it is, like... Have we really gotten a, a game out of Bethesda since the Microsoft acquisition? I don't know. I mean, besides, like, whatever the latest iteration of Skyrim? Well, that and Elder Scrolls Online. But I, I don't think, like... Bethesda actually handles uh, Elder Scrolls Online.
Disney Plus to begin with, it would have gotten, if, if part of their problem of why they ended up canceling it was because it wasn't getting views, because they weren't paying attention to people watching on Disney Plus, then they're idiots. Well, Wait, well, it's not coming out on Disney Plus? I mean, it will be, but it would be delayed. They want to have it on Disney Channel first. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah. You think with how much like there's the streaming wars as people like to put it going on, you'd think they'd be paying more attention to how the services work. Taxi on the whole. There's no way to bring back like Cartoon and Cartoon and Fridays with today's. <laughs> so you did watch that? Yeah. But his idea of streaming new premieres so we all watch at the same time. I mean, that is something. Yeah. You know, it's kind of cool to be able to like go to their online stream of like retro shows. You know, and then we could chat, so people could chat in the comments of, like, their memories and new people. I mean, that, that's one of those things. Like, I absolutely loved it a few years back. It was a very uh, interesting experience when they were, uh, when Pokemon, Twitch was, yeah. yeah, streaming Pokemon. We were there! We saw yeah. that fun! Because we're talking about our memories, talking about stuff that we did Notice. Making well, new memories. Game. There was a whole mythology that came out of Twitch Plays Pokemon. Yeah, but uh, but like I was talking about more of just like them actually streaming the show, the anime. Ah, yeah. Yeah. One of those things, um, you know, doing like premiere, streaming it online for people to watch and have one. It feels like a no-brainer for how to replicate the old, you know, Friday Night line. So, there is like, there is one thing that I've seen some uh, streamers do, where they will do a quote-unquote uh, live stream of like an anime or whatever, but obviously they can't actually stream the anime, so what they do is they have like, they're like, okay, this is the timestamp, we're gonna, you know, here's the countdown, everyone get onto your, like, crunchy roll and press play at this exact time or whatever. Yeah, uh, almost kind of like what they, they did with riff tracks, where you kind of skirt around the rules by being like, okay, this is just how to track it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of the I mean, that is a market just waiting to be, uh, to be just burst open when people realize that, hey, actually letting streamers stream, uh, anime and that, that's, uh, a lot of attention. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, I would love 
love to watch like a Cartoon Network oh, stream no, of like old school cartoons. Yeah. Right. Maybe some Hanna Barbera shit. I think it's these things at the bottom of the screen here. Like, I think I they're. Know. It, I don't know. It. Well, I don't even know why this game has a plot. Like, yeah. Maybe it might make more sense if you had like, you know, the manual. Ready to go? Probably. <laughs> but let's be honest, it probably wouldn't help. But yeah. How cool would that be to have like one compilation of old stuff once a week, just like the old days? Yeah, because it wasn't just about the shows, it was also the presentation, as uh, the Attack Rebel basically mentioned, you know. Yeah. Half the show, half the actual show. Like, we've talked about it before, but uh, Toon City is still probably one of the greatest. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, the most memorable one to me, and he even showed that clip as well, yeah. is the, um, <laughs> chicken buddy, uh... Fred Flintstone and Thundar the Barbarian. Yeah. <laughs> Why is Papa Smurf? Corrupt... <laughs> Corrupt... <laughs> yeah. yeah, just... <laughs> and then you can just, like, slurp a little more drink. It's like, I don't know how to respond. That is a... That is a whole joke that went way over my head at <laughs> As an adult, I'm just like, okay, I get it now. But yeah, it, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to watch it. I love seeing all the cartoon characters interact with each other. It was funny. <laughs> That's kind of why, um, like, House yeah. and Mouth also worked really well. Sure, it was just, like, a way to repackage old cartoons, but the way they put around all that... Okay. It was half the fun. I'm not even sure if this is a thing that I remember correctly, or if it's just, like, that my mind has made up. I remember one House of Mouth segment where it was, like, uh... Uh, Hades trying to do stand-up. You know, I feel like that actually did happen. And I feel like, yeah, that probably would have gotten James Woods to reprise his role, just to make it funny. Because I'm like, part of me is like, I'm like, I'm not sure if that happened, but it seemed so perfectly in character. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready. Yeah, but it's one of those things that you're gonna have to look through all of the house of the mouth then. You don't even know if you can find it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, there, there, there is something endearing to it. It's like, you know, having something old be given a context with either, like, you know, just something that's around it or having someone commentate. It's, it's nice. I think that reminds me. There is a game coming out soon. It's uh like Mickey Mouse and Friends, and it's like a an action platformer. It looks really interesting. Cause it uses that that sort of more modern sort of art style. Yeah. Well, okay, I think I did find something. Dude, in this episode, did Hayley dress up as Mickey Mouse? I don't Do remember. Nah. Well, I found this. Perfect. Oh, God, from your memory. And yes, that is uh, the James Woods. They actually did get him to reprise the role. Yeah. 
And he's also interacting with Maleficent, which, uh... Yeah, you know, I just want to see more shit where villains are interacting, yeah. interacting with each other. That was also part of the charm of House of the Mouse. Seeing all these different characters interacting with each other, like, what are they like in their office time, right? Yeah. Like, obviously, Pete is still an asshole, just like Donald Duck, so, you know, both of them come up with, but... It was always fun to see how, like, some of the villains are just sort of, they're chill, while others will act like, hey, you think they would. <laughs> I remember, uh, I, growing up, I did have a VHS of Disney's House of Villains and House of Christmas, which I would watch every year. And why not? I mean, they both had compilations of some of the best holiday themed shorts. Right. That was one of the reasons why to watch House of Mouse. I never really watched House of Mouse, so I would not know. Yeah, House of Mouse was actually made to basically repackage the unsuccessful uh, Mickey's Workshop uh, short. That's where a lot of the quote unquote modern looking shorts came from in House of Mouse. They also used it to repackage old school shorts. In fact, I, there was even an episode where it was old school night, and they would play like really old yeah. black and white shorts. And all the guests there were, well, black and white cartoons. Yeah. They even had Drippy Dog there, and he was supposed to be like Goofy Grandpa. Even though Trippy Dog was, you know, originally supposed to be a dude. And that's just confusing. The Goofy V, you know what? Or at least the one that was announced in Mouse was based on the Goof Troop one, which is like a caricature of the uh, original Goofy mixed with the 60s how to everyman Goofy. Yeah. The one, the one that I remember the most of that was, uh, the Olympic Games one. Uh, how to do the story of the Olympic Games. Yeah. Yeah, with that, I love that announcer. Just that voice. I could listen to it all day. And with him, you know, do talking about it all this graceful way, while Goofy just makes an ass of himself. Yeah. It's a good contrast. But, um... Uh... Um... Yeah, no, that, that thought's gone. Uh, Head successfully yeah. emptied. Oh, right, actually, no, I think I know what it was now. Uh, isn't it now that, um... Isn't Oswald now in public domain or going to be soon? You know what, I'm gonna look that up. I know that they were able to use him for Epic Mickey, so... I don't know, they might have gotten him back, though. I don't know, maybe that was just a licensing thing. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, but it's like, 
he hasn't been as well protected as Mickey, so he should be yeah. entering public domain very shortly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm done. Also, apparently, he is canonically Mickey Mouse's half brother. <laughs> Which, yeah, on both a meta and I suppose uh, a canonical version, yeah, that is true. You know, I, believe... Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, you know, if you know, it, it, you know if he's entering public domain, I could see how they would still make a series off of him. But it's like, you know, if there's any company I could see somehow finagling a public domain figure into being their copyright, it would be Disney. Yeah, let's be honest. Disney may be the most magical place on earth, but the magic is well ground to pixie dust. Huh. I mean, here's the thing, like, Disney has yeah. been fighting tooth and nail to stop Mickey going public domain, and I don't think that they yeah. haven't, like, I think their latest effort has failed. Yeah. Well, one of those things, uh, I get it, but, dude. And it's especially because it's a thing if it's like, man, their their legacy is built on public domain stuff, so it's extra yeah. frustrating to see them get litigious about that kind of stuff. After all, given there's a reason why they keep remaking all their animated stuff. They're running out of ideas and ugh. Also, apparently, Katsuya Nomura's favorite Disney character is Oswald. One of his favorite, apparently. But... Why? I... I don't know! I'm gonna look... I'm gonna click that link, because I'm gonna see... I need to see why he said that. Let oh. me check the interview, because I gotta... I gotta look this Oh up. god, now I'm wondering what secret bullshit Kingdom Hearts lore there is to Oswald the Rabbit. Okay, okay. Here is the thing. Who's your favorite Disney character? Here's his response. Quote. I've come to like Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Figaro's cute too. The cat's the dark green going to I also like the white queen from Alice in Wonderland. That's his answer. So, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit... Figaro, and the White Queen from Alice in Wonderland. Okay, okay. so... Mm -hmm. Um... Basically, here's how it's gonna end up when it comes to... Uh, Mickey Mouse going out into public domain. Is that... There are elements that are still going to be trademarked. So... It's like, essentially, people won't be able to use Mickey Mouse in any way that can be related back to Disney. What the fuck? So, in other words, you can make, like, a fan-made animation, but you can't say this is a Disney official short. And I'm guessing, like, you can't also... use all of, like, the, the plethora of other, like... You can't use the castle, you can't use other peripheral characters. Yeah, and probably you wouldn't be able to use uh, the icon of, you know, his head in, like... Uh, you know, yeah. you'd have to be careful with, like, making sure yeah. that... It's kind of be the opposite, where you wouldn't be able to make the Disney logo with how he moves his head in any way. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can just imagine the first bit of media, once he hits it, is a thing of him turning and then freaking out that I can't see my ears! <laughs> but, like, because of how Mickey is kind of meant to be a very generic cartoon character, there's not a lot that they have trademarked with him in that regard. 
like maybe at most uh, his iconic red overalls or pants or whatever. They are. See, I can see that being be like, yeah, lawyers might. Uh, yeah. It's also, the yeah. my uh, streaming site has uh, the outhouse so, uh, but yeah, it's like uh, with that Winnie the Pooh horror movie, yeah. uh, the creators were very careful in not, they, they basically did not give their version of Winnie Pooh his iconic red shirt. Because... Wait, 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 wait. Are you only just hearing about this now? That was real? Yeah. I thought that was a joke! No! I thought that was a joke! <laughs> We need a blue! Blood and honey! Oh, the over the top evil, you know, like that, you know, super serious quote unquote fan film of the Power Rangers. But like, I thought it was like a joke that I didn't know that was a real thing! It's real! We need the poo is in public domain now. Ah. Oh, yeah, because that's another thing. I, I I forget sometimes that was like an actual book made by a dude before Disney got the rights. Yeah, that's right. The House of Mouse is built on a foundation that anyone can have. All right. Yep. Wow. I never understood why he was called Winnie the Pooh, because isn't that the same as saying Winnie the Crap? I, I think it was because, like, it was a, it was all based on a kid, and he was like, Pooh sounds like a, a funny bear name. My, my pet, my teddy bear is named Barrow. I still have them. Sometimes when I'm really depressed, I just, I, I need my teddy bear. My very f one of my first uh, plushies was a Velociraptor. Dude, sick. And uh, I couldn't think of a name back then, so my my mother's boyfriend at the time, he was like, "Well, why don't you call him Sniper? Because snipers sneak through, you know, the underbrush and you know surprise people." That. That's... How old were you? Uh, between five and ten. Huh. Well, it's kid that early, but well, it is Australia. You have that bigger <laughs> things to worry about. I mean, come on. Like, I was watching Star Wars. Like, at that age. You age. know what? Man. Also, you were on the Rainbow Road. Yeah. You still yeah. have it? Yeah. Good old sniper. I like to think that you should always choose one of your childhood favorite toys, because no matter how old you get, you're gonna need that, right? Mm. You know, it's just that moment of I need an adult and Way I'm the adult. See, but I'm now, well, now it's funny when when I have when I have snipers surrounded by all of my other plushes, plushes that I've bought as an adult. It's like, yes, when I was a kid, I really liked dinosaurs. Now looking at my other plushes, I've got Bowser, I've got Bowser in Peach's dress, I've got Mega Gardevoir. <laughs> no, it was technically. It is official in that it was a Build-A-Bear product. Oh. So it was like, you know, Build-A-Bear with like Nintendo life and things. I gotta see a I gotta see what that was. That sounds awesome. Also, what did you think of the trailer? I haven't looked at it. I'm doing other stuff. I, I thought you'd taken a look at it. Wait, trailer of what? The Mario Brothers oh, yeah. movie. Oh, yeah, that! I, you, you, you just said, look at the trailer. I'm like, I thought you, like, linked me the trailer for Owl House. And I'm like, no, no, no. no. I, I linked you the 
the uh, ah, okay. legal streaming link. Please vote, lawyer. I do not condone piracy. Intent. Oh god, they're in! They're here! Any mentions of unauthorized reproduction of software or other visual entertainment is being mentioned for entertainment purposes only and is not to be taken seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just send you a collection of my plushes and play not a plush, but you know, I still need to get the, the proper insert. But... Yeah, so what do you think of the trailer for the Mario movie? I thought it was pretty good. Like, yeah, Again. The only problem you, you saw my thoughts on it. I, I typed them down. Wow, but I yeah, my only issue is that it's not Mario. It's just Chris Pratt. Yeah, that's that everyone's is. issue. The French version sounds more like Mario. At least Bowser, at least Jack Black is Bowser, so I'm surprised he's here. Yeah. Like, that worked out better than expected. Okay, and here we go. Uh, I will post the, I'll post all my images of my collection in general. Alright then. Yeah, Bowser in a dress, that's a good one. Oh, and that last one, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. So I think you, you might want to check under your Gardevoir. I think she might be smuggling a pumpkin Pokemon. Yeah! Just, just a poofy dress. I know, but doesn't it look like she's smuggling a pumpkin? Oh, oh my god, I just remembered a memory. When I was a kid, I used to call Halloween Pumpkin <laughs> I was so five! So... Yeah. yeah, kid's gonna kid. Great. I cringe, but I can't fault the logic of that to me. But yeah, your, your Bowser in a dress, that is... That is top tier, dude. Yeah, because it's like... I, I was walking past the Build-A-Bear uh, vendor, and I was like, oh, they're doing, like... Licensed Mario stuff, and I'm like, oh, they've got Princess Peach's dress. I'm gonna get like a a plush cat Peach, and then I notice that it's like, oh, they're also got Bowser. It's the only chance you'll ever see. Yeah. That 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 is when the Sith Lord version of yourself appears by you. Yes. Do it. And, like, yes, this was around the same time as Bowsette, so I'm like, <laughs> the truest Bowsette. <laughs> you will never get another chance, you must.
DLC because it's coming out next week. Yeah, RimWorld adding uh, new DLC lets you uh, control, All right. like, you get like a machine psychic you can actually run your whole face with this and that. Uh, you can have now have kids. And, uh, oh yeah, there's ge there's genetic, uh, uh, you know, bio improvement. So now you can have a colony of cat, of, of Nico girl, among other things. Ready to go? Oh god, what is... This is weird. What the fuck? Did you get more of those weird pills again? Now this appears to actually be happening. Are you? I think you might be in Wonderland. It feels like a lot of that would happen in Wonderland, doesn't it? People do get that Clussy fever. Yeah. You know who we used to be afraid of clowns? That's until, that was until people realized they could be sexy. I know. But I was prepared on this. Stop making clowns sexy! I mean, oh it, se it, it seems to be a natural psychological reaction to fetishize that which makes us afraid. Almost scared to check that crazy clown video because I'm pretty sure the comment section people are gonna mention Clutchy. I am scared. <laughs> Free time. And on that note, um, I'm gonna call it for the evening. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting a little tired, so I wanna watch this thing and then I'm going. All right. I'm probably going to be stopping after this boss myself. Yeah. 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 Taking an, I think my brain is needing the extra time to process stuff. point and oh man I got figured there's gonna be some roughness because it was the first game in its series but jeez it'd be like that yeah like I, f I feel like if I am gonna give 
as in an evil another shot I, i'll probably try either maybe like one of the remakes like you said or maybe maybe one of the several dozen ports of resident evil 4 yeah uh Well, for now, I will say thank you for hanging out, and I, I hope whoever's watching this after it wasn't looking too much forward to seeing me get through Resident Evil. Yeah. Uh...